Since both use almost the same graphics, this section is real short and easy. Infinite World wins. Why? Well since they are basically the same, since Infinite World has blue lightning for its auras, it's already won. True, some of the ones that should have been blue still aren't, but you don't need much to win here. Now this is going to be tricky. In B3, you have the map to fly around in and find items and other little secrets as you go from fight to fight leveling up. In Infinite World, you have the overhead stage selector. From there, you do fights and minigames while you work on unlocking new stages as you go. So why is this tricky? Simple. You have to balance off the flying around and leveling up with the minigames and cutscenes. This is something that is tricky to compare. In truth, the only thing B3 holds over Infinite World in regards is the secret little fights you can do in leveling up. Everything else is covered in Infinite World and it goes to cover more due to the mini games and more of GT. As for the leveling up an item system, this part will be covered later as they affect more than just the story. I would say Infinite World here wins ever so slightly. You cover more of the memorable moments such as traveling down Snake Way, plus the cutscenes and, of course, covering more of GT. Finally, you can freely move between the sagas instead of having to start the story all over again each time. Now let's cover which game tells the story better. Oddly enough, it's B3. Despite all you get in the little bits of talking with nothing else, you actually get more narration. While in Infinite World, you pretty much just go to place to place without the game mentioning why. The thing is, to me at least, I prefer the way Infinite World does it. The game is made for the fans, so the vast majority of the people who play this game don't need the narration. Plus, after clearing the story on so many games over the years, having one that moves quicker is welcome in my book. So, overall, I would say Infinite World has the better story mode. There are two parts to B3's customization, and only one part to Infinite World. Both of them share a capsule system, but only B3 has a level up system. So the question is, does Infinite World's item system outweigh the two things B3 has? In terms of just the item system, there really isn't a comparison. Infinite World wins. At first glance, it looks as if the system in Infinite World is going to be more restrictive, as you have slots that you can only use certain types of items in, but it is much more free. If you look at a character like Goku, who has a total of 5 transformations, in B3 that would take 5 slots to be used them all. In Infinite World, all 5 only take 1 slot. As each item gets better from leveling up, you gain a larger bonus from support items than you did in B3, making them have a larger impact on your character. Further, since you have slots only for ultimate supers and items, you don't have to worry about using too many slots boosting your stats and then not being able to equip other abilities. Another note is the shop. In Infinite World, all the items are in stock without having to enter and exit until the item you want to buy shows up. So how does it compare to the leveling up then? There is basically an item for each of the stats you could boost through leveling. Of course, the leveling would make a character stronger. You can easily make a character incredibly strong by the time they hit level 99. Of course, the main problem with leveling up is that if you change your mind on how you want to do it, you have to start all the way back at level 1 and work your way all the way back up to 99. So while you can open a large gap through leveling, it can be pretty tedious. So I'm going to give this one to Infinite World for being more user friendly. Plus, you can finally give Goku and Frieza something other than a breakthrough to use all their transformations. Now we come to the big part. 
how fun each game is to play. To start off, they removed Hyper Mode, sort of. And so, with it, Dragon Rushes go bye-bye. I really hated both these things oh so much. Enter Hyper Mode and your opponent would know you are going for an ultimate or a Dragon Rush and just stay away until you ran out of energy and were left wide open for an attack. Next, you had the Dragon Rushes themselves. Annoying to start, and even more annoying that it was just a guessing game. I would much rather preferred something else, even something as simple as mashing, just not a game of rock, paper, scissors. Okay, rant over. Overall, the game plays similar to B3, though there are some notable changes. Ultimates can now be done freely. This makes them much easier to actually use as you don't telegraph wanting to do them nearly as much. Supers are now not tied to specific combos, and you can now be chained off pretty much anything. Of course, this gives you much more freedom to use supers. You have a second throw. Transformation ends based on fatigue instead of energy. You have this dash along with a stun attack that comes from it. New moves for most characters. Just overall, it's B3 improved with more stuff. Yes, no! Notice how the trademark symbols aren't an infinite world. Yeah, basically pointless and random, but oh well. Despite B3 losing 4 characters, Infinite World added 8, or 9, depending how you want to count, so it has more. So, overall, it balances out and you end up with more characters. Infinite World also has more costumes than B3. It takes all the ones B3 had and just adds more. Infinite World doesn't have beam struggles though. I have tried to get one started and I can't remember how many times and got nothing. Infinite World has no tournament mode. It baffles me to how this can happen, but it did. Finally, we come to the two challenge modes of each game. Fighter's Road and Dragon Arena. Dragon Arena is the only place where you really get to use your leveled up characters and is the only place to level up ones without a story mode. Fighter's Road is just that really, a long road with a lot of people to fight. They each fit their respective game how they should and it's pretty much impossible to say if one is better than the other. In either case, you're going to get a lot of fights out of it. So here we are, the moment of truth. Which one is best? I'm gonna go with Infinite World. It took the good things from Budokai 3 and improved upon them to make a game that was simply better. <laughs>